Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Dietmarov and I'm a specialist orthodontist from Moscow, Russia, where I work at Face Smile Center, which is one of the very few clinics in Russia focused in orthognatic surgery. And today I'd like to talk about a case report which was recently published in the Journal of Clinical Orthodontics. The paper is titled Extraction of a Lower Incisor for Orthodontic Decompensation of a Skeletal Class II Deformity. Before I delve into the case, I'd like to say thanks to Dr. Giovanni Biondi, and he was the person who encouraged me to experiment more with single lower incisor extraction. For the past two decades, Dr. Biondi has been an instructor at the Tweet Study course in Arizona, where we actually first met. And on this photo, we are in La Spezza, Italy, where Dr. Biondi is a clinical director at the Institute of Giuseppe Cazzani. Okay, let's start with the case. The patient is a 27-year-old female with a chief complaint of receding chin and dental crowding. Uh, we initially had a tandem consultation with Dr. Andre Sinuk, who is a specialist in orthognatic surgery and the head of face smile center and we advised the patient that orthognatic surgery would be the best treatment option to address her main complaint. A traditional pre-surgical protocol for a skeletal class two cases with proclined lower incisors involves the extraction of the lower first and upper second premolars. Removal of the lower premolars helps to upright the proclined lower incisors while the arch lengths are balanced by extracting the upper premolars. This is how the situation looks after the mandibular advancement. And in this scenario, maxillary space closure is accomplished primarily by molar mesialization, preserving the upper incisor inclination with minimal changes. This approach is of course biomechanically challenging and time consuming. So therefore clinicians nowadays often resort to a shortcut in which only the lower premolars are extracted. Such a trade-off leaves the upper second molars unopposed after mandibular advancement, and this results in over-eruption of this teeth. So this will likely require the extraction of this teeth later down the road. Our case report illustrates an alternative decompensation plan with the extraction of just a single lower incisor. This simple solution helps to avoid unopposed upper posterior teeth and shortens the presurgical phase. A critical issue that makes this extraction choice possible is a favorable Bolton index. In other words, you have to be sure that the lower tooth mass exceeds the upper tooth mass initially. So when we look at the initial intraoral photos of this patient, we can see that she had rather narrow upper laterals. So the first thing which I did in planning this case was measuring her Bolton index. Here are my calculations and they demonstrate that her Bolton was about 82%, which signifies anterior dental mandibular excess. This gave me the green light to extract one lower incisor. Of course, I informed the patient that at the end of the treatment, the upper dental midline would align with the middle of the lower central incisor. And she accepted this as a small price to pay for a shorter and less invasive mm, presurgical phase. We extracted the most proclined lower incisor and then closed the space and prepared the arches for surgery, which took us about nine months. This superimposition can give you an idea of how much we uprighted her lower incisors before the surgery. And here are the cephalometric numbers, initial and just before the surgery. This is the patient one month after the surgery. And these are her final photos. Patient's profile before and after. And this is the final superimposition to give you an idea about the surgical movements. Here you also can see her initial and final dental casts and appreciate occlusal relationships. And the result was stable one year after the completion of the treatment. And it is unnoticeable, it's completely unnoticeable that she does not have 
one lower incisor. And here we are, three of us, the surgeon, the, the patient and the orthodontist. You can find more records on this case and detailed description of every step of the treatment in the original article, the link to which I will leave below this video. I also highly recommend you to subscribe to the Journal of Clinical Orthodontics. Not only you'll get the new issues, you will also have an access to all the archives dating back to 1960s. And one more announcement for today. I would like to welcome everyone to the Moscow Orthodontic Study Group meeting dedicated to orthognatic surgery. The meeting will take place in Moscow on May the 17th, 2024, and our guests this time will be Dr. Andrei Sinuk and Dr. David Sarver from Birmingham, Alabama. We'll talk about the critical aspects of presurgical orthodontics, we'll discuss traditional presurgical mechanics as well as uh, various useful tips and tricks, and of course we'll share and discuss with you many surgical cases from start to finish. To learn more details and to register, please visit the website of the Moscow Orthodontic Study Group. That's all for now. I hope you like the case report. For more useful clinical information, please subscribe and stay tuned.